All right. So um, we're here tonight to just chop for a second because I haven't done uh, just a chill stream in a minute. Are your elbows looking? You're looking okay. All right. Uh, I saw a couple of comments and responses that I wanted to speak on and elaborate on that I felt were useful enough to, to create more discussion. So here's another one that was really, well, not, not really divisive. Most people liked it, but the people that didn't like it, the Carlton section resonated with a lot of people, which I'm proud of because I felt like that was everything I said with Will, if you know, you know. Like all the stuff leading up to Will, Yummy, Tay K, uh, Devontae, Jordan, etc. Um, a lot of that stuff is if you know, you know. If you've worked with black boys, I didn't say anything new to you, right? If you're if you raise or around black boys, most of that is relatively common knowledge. It's just I just critiqued and analyzed it and broke it down. I felt like the stuff with Carlton hadn't gotten out a lot. I feel like we just haven't had a lot of conversations about the the sellout the oreo discourse i don't know what to call it and so there's a couple of things i felt like i wanted to talk about with that one in looking so some of the critiques were you know not every critique is in good faith but some of them was like okay if i'd have tried to be more clear then this takeaway wouldn't have been possible so i can understand that because people like can you define sellout and you know stuff like that um and yeah, like I left, I left a little too much of that in my own head, thinking that people would just get it because they get where I'm coming from. But you know, not everybody's coming from the same um, standpoint and background. So first, I want to address calling parents who move their kids into all white areas sellouts. That was not uh, I, that was not the, what I wanted people to take away. I don't think that you're an automatically a sellout or some type of, you know, anti-black race trade or whatever, if you, you know, if you if you live in an all white area, you're the only, you're the fly in the milk is the phrase I use a lot. Or if you move your kids to that area. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case. So, it's, and people brought up like, sometimes you, it's like, if you have a choice between a, a being in like intense, uh, you know, poverty and lack in certain areas, you know, I'm from the South Chicago suburbs. I'm not from the Wild Hunnets. Like, I understand. Um, I live in Atlanta. I don't live in Clayco, not Atlanta. You know, I don't live in the Swats. I don't live in certain parts of Decatur. Um, you know, and I have the means to live uniquely I, I have the means even before YouTube to, as much as I could, create a uh, a black enclave around my children that still had white people. I mean, my kids go to a mixed school, um, but some people can't do that. Some people, it's like you get an apartment in the boondocks and you get out of you know the hood because that's overall a better situation. I fully get that. And I don't begrudge anybody for doing that. That's that's survival tactics, right? What I was talking about is when you have the means and you know, and, and when I said the phrase, you think the white man's ice is colder, right? But some people don't know any better, right? Because I was a teacher for 10 years and I can tell you most like, pre-secondary education after you get out of elementary school everything else is whatever <laughs> to be honest with you like there's some and i know some people took that away but, I, but other people you know being empathetic i've never had my blackness questioned very much maybe a little bit when i was you know very young and i and i visited my cousins from you know really from the south side of chicago or hung out on the block at my grandmother's house and started using big words. I had a couple of those moments, but like I've, I haven't since very young had my blackness challenge, right? People that know my real name. <laughs> you wasn't gonna challenge my blackness too tough. Um, but 
I can imagine I have a cousin who's from, you know, way out away from black folks, Illinois. And that was a, a, a significant point of contention for him for most of his life. And so, you know, that there's hypervigilance there, right? And because, as I said in the video, being labeled a sellout or Oreo is one of the more like hurtful labels to get as a black person. I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know if there's too many worse things that you can be called as a black person than a sellout or Oreo. So I can imagine that some people are hypervigilant to that critique. So I want to be clear that if you are moving away from lack or moving for better opportunities, legitimately, nothing wrong with that. I would advise against it at all costs. I would advise if you can, if you have an option between sending your kids to a mediocre black school or the highest achieving white school in the state, the mediocre black school is where you should send your black child. And this is not on some black separatist, black nationalist stuff, which is the other thing I saw floating out there. It's not on some segregationist shit. It's because, and there's research on this, it is better for your children, period. It is better for your children to not be the only black person that they know. And quick, type, type F in the chat. If you were the only black person, is it F? Should I say F? Whatever. Type F in the chat if you've had that only black person experience and it sucks and you'd have traded it in for the hood any day. Not the hood. You, you get my point. Um, I put a book in the uh in the in the um description. It's called The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. Um, and it goes to everybody, Mexican. If you are discernibly racialized as anything other than white, whether that be black, Asian, Mexican, Indian, and you are the only racialized person within a space, that is not a fun experience. Just like if you were if just like the one or two white dudes that, you know, might be in a black community or a Mexican community, that other ring experience where you are the minority is not easy. It's tough. Um, and the, getting back to the, the point of that statement was that a lot of black people, and this is generational now, this is something that has been happening for generations. You see the type of dysfunction that happens in black communities um, because of, you know, in certain numerous reasons here, you can go back and watch some of the video about Robert Moses to get a, um, a reason why. So you see that dysfunction, you see the outcomes, you say, okay, the outcomes over here are better. So let me take my black ass over to this white ass area. And like, it makes sense on paper. So you see that, so when that happens, it's, it's just, it can be very traumatizing to the kids. And they don't necessarily get a better education. They get a maybe on average better education just based on the lack of certain barriers. If those barriers are not there, which they very well can be, because because rates of disciplinary action against black black children in general and you know test scores don't match like if you can go like there's a there's a site called great schools but really any state will have some type of school report card um uh idris siedu uh is asking about african-american immigrant version of black experience um she stirs up some real stuff internally I don't know whose video you're talking about, though. I know Julesy dropped a, a video around there, um, but I, I, I'll try to come back to that. Um, but yeah, it's just not good for the kids. It's not like there's probably some statistics that show like a numbers, like maybe there's some test scores, maybe there's some socioeconomic outcomes that make you look better. And I'm sure there is, and probably partially to an extent because if you got the money to move into elite all white areas, you probably have the money to provide your kid with certain resources that will guarantee their financial, economic, and educational uh, outcomes be higher. But overall, that experience is generally unhealthy and it's unwise, but a lot of black folks, you know, like I said, think the white man's ice is colder. Um, you know, it goes back to that black excellence conversation from the Obama video. You know, you think the white man's ice is colder. You think that the only way to get access to certain power 
um, you know, dynamics and frameworks and networks is to immerse yourself into white communities, into white uh, frameworks. And no, it, it doesn't doesn't really work. Um, you don't get access. If you look at the most powerful black people in the country, where did they go to college? Put a put a put a put a, a HBCU in the chat if you know where most of the some of the more powerful black people in the country went to college at. They did not go to only Harvard and I don't know Duke or whatever. HBCUs have their own issues with elitism a lot, but like. You know, I'm in Georgia, Stacey Abrams running for governor. That's Spellman. You got a uh, freaking, even though she not, she's doing an awful job representing, but uh, God damn, this is no disrespect. I mean, no like specific disrespect to her in general, just the, the station. What is our vice president's name? Kamala. Thank you. Fuck. Um, you know, uh, it, Kamala went to Howard. Like, if you just go on LinkedIn in certain spaces, not everywhere, right? But you go on LinkedIn here in Atlanta, you're trying to find somebody black with, with, with some nice credentials and, and uh, behind their name, you're going to, seven times out of ten, see an HBCU next to their name. Uh, Kamala went to Howard, Will. She went to Cal, I think, for law school. She went to Howard for undergrad. And that undergrad HBCU experience, it, it does something for you. It does something for you. It costs a lot, but it does something for you. So, yeah, I just want to make that clear that there's no automatic sellout, right? The whole point of that section was to really call in to this particular Black experience and to validate it as a Black experience. That was the goal. Um, I don't like, and I feel like I've been pretty consistent with this over a lot of content, and I've had... I've had conflict with different people over different ways in which it manifests because that's why we have the whole biracial discourse that I'm not going to do tonight. Um, but the whole point of that was to call in those people and to validate that as a black experience because black is not, to me, a black experience is just to experience the world when you're racialized as black. And even if you do a bunch of bullshit that I don't fuck with, like, which is not automatic if you're in the suburbs. I want to be clear on that. But even if you even if you're Candace Owens, you are still black and having a black experience, and there is insight and value to understanding that from that standpoint. Does that make sense? That was the whole point. And furthermore, a plenty of like plenty of black folks in those suburban flying and milk experiences, they have a they 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 struggle in different ways with identity because they, you know, for the same reasons I talked about with um Carlton, a lot of them are lucky and have an emerging experience. It's happening a lot in social media where black youth are able to collect together like more than like I have so much jealousy in my heart for some of y'all young folks and the fact that y'all are building community via social media, right? And somebody just pointed out like uh, and sell out like being from the hood and, and speaking the lingo and doing all the things is not guaranteed you are not a sellout. Ben Carson, uh, what's what's the brother, the uh, Clarence Thomas? Um, I 